Hello, YouTube. Today, we're going to be learning about the anatomy of computers. This is a really bad camera angle. So, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how a computer works, sort of. I'm basically going to explain to you when people talk about CPU and GPU and RAM and RAM and... All that other good stuff that you just don't know what the heck it actually is. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. So, basically, when you're going to build a computer, the case is just the case. That's pretty simple. Case. That's your case. Call the case the case. Screen. Also, just a screen. Your screen is not your computer. It's just a screen. So, moving on. What are all those little things? So, let's start out with the motherboard. What is the motherboard? Well, the motherboard is a board. It's a big circuit board. Actually, it takes up a lot of your case. It's about, it's a little bit bigger than this paper, probably. And the motherboard is life, and the motherboard is love. Everything runs into the motherboard because the motherboard is life and the motherboard is love. So, what is the big crazy thing on the motherboard? The big crazy thing that sits on top of the motherboard or kind of in, in more in the motherboard, I would say, is your CPU. And your CPU stands for Central Process, I can't spelling, unit. And what that does is it does all of the crazy little calculations with this crazy little microscopic little path of madness and electricity. And it's a little square, about that big. A little metal square weighs m way more than you would th ever think that it should. But anyway, sits in this little casing, um, closes with a lever. It sits jammed into the motherboard really tightly. On top of that is your CPU fan. This is a very poor representation. And the CPU fan blows air onto your CPU. And this is the big weird thing, that fan part that sticks out of your motherboard. So, basically... The reason you have to have a CPU fan is because CPUs, the actual increments these days that CPUs do things in, like mine runs at 3.4 gigahertz, and gigahertz stands for billion, billions of processes per second. So basically, this runs at 3.4 billion impulses per second which is extraordinarily fast um, running through that little crazy micro thing running through your CPU. So that is why it's the central processing unit. Now collected to your CPU is your RAM sticks. These little RAM sticks come out of the motherboard. Also a poor representation, sort of. A little shadow effect right there. That's your RAM stick. Whatever. And... A RAM stick, let's say that we have 8 gigabytes in this system, that's how much I have. Um, that would be 4 here, and 4 here. And you can also have like 2, and 2, and 2, and 2, um, depending on what the heck you're going to do with it. But anyway, these are um, the same type of RAM, so they work in dual channels, that means they work together. It's good to have dual channel if you have more than one stick of RAM, which you probably should. Usually people have two, like me. And the CPU stores little things that he's, it's doing inside of the RAM. So, there's that. Now, what is a GPU? Well, a GPU is a little bit different. A GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit or graphics card for short. Now what the graphics card does is it takes, it's basically a little bit like another 
CPU, but not exactly. It's kind of, it's another processing unit that is built specifically sitting on its own card. And here's the motherboard. It actually, that's incredibly huge for a graphics card, but you get the point. Um, and it attaches into the motherboard. And when you do that, it has its actual GPU, whatever you want to call it, sitting right there. And then it's got its own little network system set up and little CUDA cores and the whole nine yards, whatever. Um, it's also got its own RAM, um, which is usually GDDR5, generally these days. Sometimes in the lower end cards, you get DDR3. And usually, like mine has two gigabytes of GDDR5. I'm maybe going to get a card that has three. Two gigabytes is usually the perfect number, but we're not going to get too into that right now. So that is what the graphics card is. Now, what does the graphics card do? Well, the graphics card is almost 100% for gaming, but not exactly because gaming, when it comes to computers, is the same thing as 3D effects, which also include things like programming, especially, especially 3D, graphic design, also especially 3D, and anything else that would include 3D stuff. So, the GPU sits on the motherboard with all of these other things, and also has its own little output in the back. While your motherboard may have something like a VGA out, your graphics card might even have its own VGA out, but usually they would have something like HDMI, and those will go to the better end screens, and there's always a converter, almost always a converter for VGA as well that comes with the card so you can make it run on VGA for your older screens or your smaller screens. Like if you have a television, it's usually HDMI, so that's what that is really good for. Now that is what we have so far. Now we have to get into the, see the, you have RAM here, which is random access. I still can't spell memory. And RAM is just for the CPU, but some things like your operating system, like all your photos, like all your games have to be stored on a HDD or hard drive disk or or SSD and an SSD is a solid state drive which is kind of a new thing coming out here which is a somewhat new thing, but essentially an SSD is like a giant jump drive that takes the place of a hard drive. Now, why this is good is because on an SSD, SSDs are generally 10 times faster than an average hard drive disk. So just your spinning platter drive with the reading thing, it just looks like that. While your SSD, if you open it up, just has little cores on it. And it's, it doesn't make any noise. It doesn't move at all. This may make some noise. It may even rattle just slightly. That's part of the down, that's part of the downfall of hard drives. Now, why are SSDs worse? Because they are much more expensive right now and they don't have quite as much space. While you can get a hard drive disc for only $65, that's a whole terabyte. You can get a solid state drive. If you're going to get a terabyte, it might cost you closer to a thousand dollars. I'm just estimating. I haven't looked at them in a while, but it's ridiculous. So what I have is I have a one terabyte hard drive that can store lots and lots of things, but my operating system or your OS Your operating system, which may be Windows or Linux, etc., Macintosh even, if you're going to build your own Macintosh, I don't know what the heck, but whatever, if you're into that, then 
you can put it on either one of these hard drives. Now, I put it on the solid state drive because a solid state drive is 10 times faster so it can load up everything the OS when you're first booting up your computer it loads the OS in to your RAM whereas it runs constantly inside of your RAM so this got extraordinarily messy and I'm sorry for that but I'll try to cut it up and make it as organized as I can in the video something else I should probably mention are optical drives and optical drives are just any disk drive now usually you want to actually install your operating system using an optical drive so that's part of the reason you might want to have an optical drive but of course if you want to watch DVDs or blu-rays then you have to have an optical drive ready for that. The same thing with burning. If it's not ready to burn a DVD or a Blu-ray, then it won't just be able to do that magically out of the box. So, this has been Cole from Cole and Jordan Studios. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a like below. If you've got questions about this crazy video, leave them in the comment sections below. And if this video has under 2,000 views, then I will try to reply to it. Click right here to subscribe to Colin Jordan Studios. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching again. Peace out.